All right, what's up, everybody? We are in iteration number 17 of 11D's video updates. I think I'm going to switch these from, I'm not going to call them weeklies anymore. Uh, I think they're going to be either bi weekly or perhaps weekly at some point, but I don't want to keep the frequency of the update in the title. So we're going to start calling them 11D change logs, uh, and this is going to be 11D change log number 17. And we're going to start with the community update. Uh, we have this new site from Troy V. Troy V, you need your name on your website. That's not at the top. It's not in your about page. Uh, good looking site though. Alexander has a new site, built with 11D. Uh, Miriam is redoing their website, still with 11D, um, starting from scratch with a new design. Jason Baton just launched a new site, built with 11D. Uh, Dan Yushik has a new site, built with 11D. Hijau.xyz as a new site built with 11D. And I really enjoyed this example that Mike put up um, about a little DIY storybook. I always like when folks uh, create their own design systems from scratch using 11D. And this is a great demo of that. Johnny Cates has a new site built with 11D. And this was another good demo that Twitter user Sir Kane put up showcasing the 11D island component, is land component, um, for just some JavaScript island uh, component initialization, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, I don't think that this one was new as of the last two weeks, but I missed it on Twitter. So just a shout out to Claudia Renders, Renders, um, new starter site, the 11D not so minimal blog starter. Asher Cabrera has this new blog post about how to do 11D transforms with asynchronous content inside of Nunjux macros. Nunjux macros historically have had trouble with async content inside there. Um, and so you can read this blog post about how Asher solved it. Uh, Dana Byerly has a new entry in their series about 11D and WordPress using 11D to build a uh, headless WordPress site. Check that one out. Chris Kirk Nielsen published this great blog post about managing SVG files with 11D's new render plugin. Now the render plugin is a bundled by default plugin in 11D that lets you render various template languages in uh, other template languages. So if you are interested in using that for SVG, check out Chris's new post. Uh, Michael W. Delaney posted this link to um, an example of how they use Bootstrap with 11D, which I thought was pretty good, so check that out. Raymond Camden put up a very small code sample of how they do drafts in 11D on their blog. You can set a draft property in your data cascade, either at a, on a single template or in a folder of templates um, to control whether or not blog posts gets pub get published on your site. Sean C. Davis has this great blog post about how they automatically tweet um, after they do a successful Nellify build. So if you're interested in automating your, hey, I wrote a new blog post tweet, um, you can do that with this blog post. I thought it was really cool. I really like this plugin that Mathau posted. They wanted a really streamlined way to use images instead of their markdown files um, and tie those into the 11D image optimization pipeline. So check out this plugin if you're interested in that. Uh, Sean posted this link to their 11D plugin that compiles SAS. So if you're interested in another option for that, um, check it out. I really enjoyed this uh, blog post from David Darns. Uh, I know we talk about Nord Health a lot and the design system that they have, um, but it was a really great uh, sort of look at how they use web components in their design system. And that's built with 11D, so there, it is some 11D uh, applicable content in there, so check that one out. And then another one from Chauncey Davis about using Notion as their backend system. They sort of write their post posts in Notion and use Notion to publish them, I believe, as content files inside of their GitHub repository, so it isn't just using Notion as a data source. So I really like the distinction there because um, if Notion goes away, you still have all your content as flat files, which I think is really great. And then Mike posted this really great blog post that I'll probably end up, end up using in a couple places about using 11D's navigation plugin, but also allowing the navigation entries to be expandable using details elements. So I thought that was super neat and I'll probably end up using that trick. You may see that on the 11D docs at some point. <laughs> 
And then just going through the talks and podcasts and streams that we have this week. Uh, I was on Ryan Carnionato's stream this week. He's the author of SolidJS uh, to talk about Eleventy. And I thought it was a really great discussion. I really enjoyed it. I'd be happy to, to do it again, Ryan. Yeah, it was great. We went through a lot of different things um, in the Eleventy verse. Um, and even talked about Astro a little bit too, which I thought was good. Um, Masic posted a link to their new newsletter, which will have some Eleventy content. So if you're interested in that, uh, give them a subscription. There was another entry in Brian Robinson's 110 second 11 series about template filters. So check that out. All right, now for the official uh, 11 entries for this iteration of the 11 change changelog. We are in the market for a new possum mascot. This will be our third commissioned artist to create a possum mascot. So if you have strong feelings about an artist that you think would match up uh, very nicely to 11D, please mention them in this tweet thread. We aren't really tied to any specific artistic style. In fact, I would like to see uh, just a variety of artists represented here. So if you have someone in mind, let us know. It's pretty fun this week. We did a co-tweet with Astro, zero JS by default, and it seems like folks really enjoyed that. That was fun. All right, so since last time we did two releases of 11D, one canary, one um, official release. So on the 1.0 stable release of 11D, we did a 1.0.2, which was a very, very small bug fix release. It only had one issue resolved in it around liquid shortcode argument parsing. It was a very edgy edge case, but I did feel like it was important to get a 1.0 stable release with that fix in, just so we don't see any issues with that specifically moving forward. So if you're interested in checking out more details about that, we do have uh, release notes published on the GitHub. You can check out the issues that are related to that. And then we also did a Canary 15 release of, on the 2.0 branch. So biggest thing that I really wanted in here was uh, improved performance with the internationalization plugin. There was a pretty hefty uh, performance regression that came with using the internationalization plugin, and we got that patched up in this release. So if you've been seeing some performance regressions and you've been experimenting with the internationalization plugin, definitely upgrade to this Canary 15. And I'll go through the other entries here. One of the big things we that I'm really excited about is um, we now look for 11d.config.js and 11d.config.cjs files by default in your project. So you no longer are restricted to using .11d.js as your configuration file. We'll look for these files as well. Now we don't merge configurations. We don't use multiple configurations. It has a very specific order that it looks for and it uses the first configuration file that it finds. So keep that in mind. But if you aren't interested in having a dot file configuration file, uh, which I know hides uh, some files on Mac OS and some other operating systems, just rename it to 11d.config.js um, and that should be the easiest um, fix for that problem moving forward. Thank you to Raphael Hoser for this uh, PR. It was really great. We did a small addition to allow 11D plugins to access the path prefix property. Now we did ship a new 11D navigation plugin that makes use of this. So if you've been seeing a lot of URL filters in, in your 11D benchmarking, those will go away with the 2.0 Canary 15 and the newest 11D navigation plugin version. Yeah, a little performance optimization there. One of the biggest code pieces that went into uh, this new Canary was the, the new HTML base plugin. If you aren't using path prefix, if you haven't used a base directory folder for your site's deployment in the past, this probably won't be super relevant to you, but we are using this as a much nicer workflow for deploying your site into a uh, folder without changing any of your uh, 11 project files, which I think will be great. Now previously when you're using, when you used path prefix, you would have to use the URL filter manually inside of your templates to transform any URLs that you wanted to have the new path prefix. And moving forward, we're just going to use this. We're going to recommend that folks use the HTML base plugin, which will automatically transform your HTML uh, and inject the path prefix for you. Now, this new base plugin adds a few additional features um, that weren't available with the path prefix and URL filter method previously. Just the biggest one is probably you can use a full URL here. 
if you want to override the path prefix with your own base ref here there's an option to do that and you can use the, a full URL here instead of just a directory name. So that's probably the biggest one. The nice thing is that you can also use this plugin to transform your RSS feeds or your JSON feeds to have absolute URLs that link back to your content. I know some feed readers don't automatically transform your RSS feed content for you to be absolute URLs. For best compatibility, we kind of had an approach that was in the RSS plugin that did this, um, but we'll be centralizing all of that back to use this new HTML base plugin. So it should clean up a few different things quite nicely. And I know that with the navigation plugin, with the new internationalization feature, and the RSS plugin are going to benefit from this new plugin. So you may not use it directly, but you'll either see performance improvements to your site um, from not having to use the URL filter anywhere, or you'll see um, workflow improvements if you use some of these other plugins as well. So I think it's going to be a nice clean addition, even if you aren't using the path prefixing feature. One thing we shipped on the docs since the last iteration, since uh, changelog number 16, was that we're now using edge functions throughout the documentation. So just to be clear, 11e.dev slash docs is being rendered um, exclusively with edge functions in the 11 d edge plugin. And so that allows that's going to allow us some, some neat customization options moving forward. And the first one we, we shipped in the last couple of weeks was a way to have a site-wide preference of your um, favorite templating syntax. So throughout the uh, template syntax choosers, on the site, you can now say, hey, I want to always show um, this template syntax and prefer this one if it exists. So if I select Nunjux here on this little dropdown, it will then prefer Nunjux for all of the different uh, code snippet examples on this, on this documentation page. And so this should apply to site-wide to all of the tab syntax choosers that we have on the entire site. And you can also go to the bottom of the page and change your preference there too. Another change we made in the 2.0 Canary 15, we did change the default node module ignores entry. So previously it was just node model modules slash with the double star. So that ignored the root node modules in your folder. And moving forward, uh, we want to use uh, ignore by default any node modules folder in your in your project. So just keep that in mind moving forward. We have the um, documentation updated with that as well. So um, if you want to change that, you can go ahead and do that in 11.1.0 and 11.2.0 as well. And I did want to say a quick thank you to Sam and Jessica um, for the code change for this. Another thing we shipped with Canary 15 was a small subtle change to the add filter configuration API. And now we use this for universal filters, um, but historically, if you tried to add an async function using this add filter API, it wouldn't have worked in Nunjux, or it would have rendered um, object promise in your template or something like that. Um, it wouldn't have worked how you wanted. But moving forward, we did add async um, compatibility with this add filter configuration API method. So it will work with async functions moving forward. Now, if you try to return a promise inside of a synchronous function, that will throw an error. So just keep that in mind. Do you need an async function here passed in? Or you can alternatively use the new add async filter API that will let you return a promise without using an async function. It should work as expected. So a couple of different options if you want to do asynchronous filters in Nunjux, which before required a separate API call you would had before you might have been doing add Nunjux async filter. And we just made it a little bit nicer with these universal filter uh, API methods. Oh, we have a couple new pages on the docs under this Y11 banner up here. I'm um, just talking about 11D performance. I kind of went through some of the benchmarking numbers we got from our Markdown benchmark, uh, site performance, talking about the leaderboards, and build performance. So a bunch of different entries and deep links to our weekly videos that we've done before. 
um, should, which should give some additional context on this. And that's another thing that we added in the last couple of weeks is we will be showing these contextual links to our 11D changelog or an 11D weekly videos just to show some additional personalized content specific to the documentation as people are navigating around. So I think that should be useful for people. And then lastly, on the docs, we added this new partial hydration documentation page. Um, again, with links to the the videos on 11D Weekly that we had previously, um, but just really talking about the new is land component that we have for islands architecture. So if you're interested in that, I'd check out the docs. It's basically the same thing that we published before, but now it's formally on the documentation in the plugin section. Uh, so that's it for the last two weeks. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter or in the comments uh, below. That's it. Thanks. Keep building, y'all.